No matter what column tool you're using, corners can be a bit of a challenge. Let's take a look at how to handle some of those corners a little bit more effectively. So I have up on screen a sharp angle. If I were to use a column one to digitize this, and this might be the top of an M or the bottom of a V or the edge of something that you're outlining. If I were to use a column one, I could go across here and then a lot of digitizers, especially when they're starting out, will only go at those transitions, which makes sense. You want to use as few points as possible. Finish this up, hit enter, and I'm digitizing in a very light gray. Let's see if we can't get that a little bit easier to see. That's better. So now you can see just how dense the stitches are right here in the center. On the edges, or on the ends, we're doing okay, but in the center, it's getting a really, really tight bunch of stitches here, and this will begin to bubble up and can actually start to pull a hole in the garment, either at the point or inside this angle. So let's look at another way to perhaps handle these stitches. I'm gonna move this over to the side, and let's do this again a little bit differently. So one of the ways that we're going to look at doing this, and I will draw on screen what my plan is so that you get a little bit better idea, is we can come in and we can actually divide this up into pieces so that the stitches are always traveling the same direction. So I could start out coming across here, come up, and I might break this apart into kind of three pieces. There we go. Here's the third. So we'd have one, two, and my three just really doesn't want to draw today. There we go, three. And this type of um, handling of a corner is typically considered capping a corner. Let me get back to my digitizing tool. And I will leave this on so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to grab my column one. You could do this with a column two as well. It doesn't matter. So you're going to start at the end. Then you're going to come up the side and you're going to finish the first leg. And I kind of go to where everything meets. And then I will hit enter to complete just that shape. And I really need to quit digitizing in that gray so you guys can see what I'm doing. Let's do this one in purple. There we go. After I get that leg done, I will then grab my walk tool and I will travel up to the point. Hit enter to complete that. Grab my column one again and this time I'm going to come back down but I'm going to try to keep my stitch directions in this same um, angle. So I'm going to start up here, come across, come all the way down, overlap a stitch or two, Come over to the side, click, hit enter to complete that. Now you can see how those stitches are keeping a nice consistent density all the way through. And then we will finish up this side here. It's the end. Here's the other end. Hit enter to complete that shape. And now, We have a different way of handling that. Let me clear off my markings, sliding with us. There we go. So here the density is staying very nice and even. All my edges look very much the same. When I go into 3D, you can see this has a nice, shiny, rounded look, whereas this starts to pull and, and sink in a lot of extra stitches. This would be considered a cap. Let's take a look at another way to handle this. So let me grab a column one again. This time I'm going to remember to change my thread color first. I'm going to digitize in blue. This time we will do what's considered a miter. So I'm going to create my end. There we go. I'm going to come up a little bit higher than where the, the legs meet. 
because I want to provide enough stitching to overlap. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide and bisect this angle. So I'm going to come up here and make my end. And to complete that, and then I'm going to come down the other side. So I make my end. This time, I'm going to come across where those legs meet, but I'm going to come into the point. And you can see how much I'm overlapping. If that's not enough when you sew it out, we can change that overlap in an edit. Hit enter to complete that shape. And actually that looks a little light for an overlap to me. So I'm gonna bring this up and overlap just a bit more. There we go, that looks a little bit better. And if I look at this in 3D, you can see the difference. We've got a cap, we've got a miter. For Design Shop's purposes, they would consider this a miter one. If you're using the single line tool that can change corners automatically if you have um, Pro or Pro Plus, you've got the ability to choose what corner you're using or how you're handling corners. This would be a miter style one in the blue. The purple would be a cap. The other thing you will see is a miter style two. Now a miter style two is not typically done with a satin stitch. It is typically done with a zigzag or a tackle and it's meant to mimic the sewing of um, a conventional sewing machine going around the edge of something. In which case you can't taper a corner on a traditional sewing machine. It would go to the edge of however far it can go, like this, and then you would leave the needle down, pull the presser foot up, rotate the garment, and then you would put the presser foot back down and continue in the opposite direction. So it would end up giving a very squared off corner. And so you'll have something that looks more like this. I'll change this to green. So we each have them in a different color. I'll move this over. So let's fit window. So we have the shape. We have what we probably don't want in the red. We have a cap in the purple. We have a miter style one in the blue and a miter style two in the green. So caps and miter style one tend to be used more for cover stitches and satin stitches. The miter style two typically used more for applique tack downs and the like. So you've got a wide variety of new ways to handle your corners and keep those densities looking nice and neat. And hopefully you've got the tools to better navigate those corners in the future.